Jay. And I'm Sean. And we watched a movie. Of course we did. We watched the new one on Netflix called The Trial of the Chicago 7. Nailed it. Yeah? Okay. <laughs> so Who this knows? is a new one from writer-director Aaron Sorkin. Mm. So it's very talky. Is it? I hadn't noticed. <laughs> There's lots of characters, mm -hmm. lots of big names. More than seven. Uh, more than seven, that's true. More than seven. That's one of the things about this movie. <laughs> it is, is. There were actually more than seven people on trial. And then sometimes fewer. Also true. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it really yeah. jumps around. It's exciting, yeah. <laughs> it is. Keeps you guessing. <laughs> yeah. How many people are in the courtroom? <laughs> We'll see. We don't know. <laughs> Picture it being 1968. Okay. In Chicago. Okay. The Democratic National Convention is in town to Sounds nominate fun. one candidate. Just the one, eh? Well, it's what they're going the with Democratic in 1968. All right. To run against Richard Nixon in the upcoming election. Good. Good stuff and ultimately lose, lose to Richard Nixon in the upcoming election. Guys. Spawning four years of corruption and, well, more than that, actually. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, it was a legacy. A legacy was, of corruption. It was. And that's not even what this is about, and yet it still is. It still is. Mm -hmm. So there are a bunch of protesters that go to Chicago in the summer of 1968 yeah. to uh, make their voices heard while the spotlight is on the convention. Mm -hmm. So there are hundreds, thousands of people there from all across the U.S. mainly mm -hmm. um, to make noise about the issues of the day, which are the issues. not that different than, than the, the issues, issues of today. today. Yeah, well, I mean, civil rights obviously being a real big one and the Black Panthers uh, were sending in a contingent. Uh, lots of anti-Vietnam War protesters. You know? Yeah. There was some big stuff going on. There was. And so the Chicago police's response was to just beat everyone into submission. Right. Right. And it seemed like a lot of the bureaucracy was sort of funneling people towards that eventuality. By refusing to like issue permits or like yeah, that's nobody a good point. in Chicago was working with them at all. And we see that but at the beginning of the movie. We're coming, so you should plan for it maybe. Yeah, and they were asking. <laughs> yes. Yeah, specifically. Nicely, yeah. Give us a permit, give mm -hmm. us a designated place to protest. Yeah. It's good for everyone. Mm -hmm. Uh, so it didn't go well it because did they didn't well. have any permits. No. So then they just ended up gathering wherever and then the police came in and just beat them up. That's right. That's and what the sticks are for. <laughs> yeah, that's, that is. Mm -hmm. And in the aftermath, uh, a number of people were charged with very serious crimes. Federal crimes. That no one would, had ever been no charged, one had ever with, been charged with. But they uh, trotted them out just for this. And they're put on trial. Oh, yeah. They, show trial. Oh, heck yes. And it's very interesting, the timing of this, because uh, LBJ's government, Justice Department, specifically decided not to charge the people with anything after an investigation. But as soon as Richard Nixon got in, mm -hmm. his attorney general decided, let's go for it. And so they did. With no... Different, there are no different facts. evidence. No, exactly the same yeah. stuff that was, was already known. He was just mad at the guy. That's right. He was actually yeah. mad at the outgoing attorney general mm -hmm. for not resigning in a timely, <laughs> respectful manner. So he decided <laughs> to just ruin the lives of eight men. <laughs> so that seems fair. Uh, but it's probably the least shocking thing <laughs> in all of this. It's kind of... The U.S. government working it's the way pretty much is. as you yeah. expected to. Yeah. yeah, pretty much. The vendettas and mm -hmm. behind the scenes, closed door decisions being made to impinge upon people's rights. Mm -hmm. So we got some big names in this cast. We do. So Eddie Redmayne is maybe the biggest, maybe the one that gets the most screen time. But there's a lot of screen time to go around. 
because he's the he's the most polished and most white and right. expensive guy on trial. So his lawyers so are smart enough to elect him. Front. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, he's often the spokesperson. Mm -hmm. uh, not often enough. Uh, <laughs> no. Other people keep volunteering for the job, such as Sasha Baron Cohen. Yeah, he's a big uh, just. He's interrupt. about what you would expect. I'm not yeah. sure he's even really acting here. <laughs> they didn't even give him a script. They no. were just like, sit here and just say what you just feel. Just do what you want. <laughs> yeah. And, uh... Jeremy Strong beside Jeremy him is Strong Jerry Rubin. Him as Jerry Rubin. Yeah. So these are all real people. This is a true yes, story. A true this is story. a actual event. As hard as that is to believe sometimes that this was oh, real. Oh, boy. This is yeah. real. Uh, John Carroll Lynch mm -hmm. as David Dellinger, mm -hmm. not Dillinger. <laughs> That's right. Get it right. Yeah, yeah. Abdul Mateen II. Mm -hmm. as not to be confused Bobby with Seale. the first. Right. As Bobby Seale, the, the, Black, Panther, the Black Panther, who was in Chicago just to eat a little airport food and leave again. He was there less than four hours, just basically a connecting flight. And yet, you um, may have guessed he had black skin, and so he was really um, great to just throw on the pile as, you know, fuel to the fire, just really make that jury feel like, sure. okay, these seven white boys could have just accidentally got mixed up in this stuff, but if they were consorting with this man, which they weren't, we hadn't even met before the trial, and yet they were all ch charged with conspiracy. That means they have to be networking and planning things together, and yet many had never even met. Well, you would think, except apparently the law was not written that way. <laughs> it's so broad it's that so they don't even crazy. have to have talked to each other. They just crazy. have to have a common purpose, which was to protest. <laughs> so, so we got some famous mm -hmm. lawyers. Uh, we do. Yeah, Mark Rylance, wonderful comb over. Yeah. He's on the defense, and You're JGL Joseph Gordon-Levitt is on the wrong side. The prosecutor. Uh huh. And we cannot discount that judge. Oh yeah, Frank uh, Langella. Uh, just to me, That's this was the, the standout role. Judge. It is the worst person in that courtroom by far. And yet, what fun uh, to play that role. Um, and how difficult to play that role, I think. For sure. To say the most outlandish things, to play a, a judge who has no sense of justice, but to do it all, not just with a straight face, but to to say it with conviction, like you mean it, like you have no sense of irony. Oh yeah, to get angry at these people who are telling you that you're crazy. <laughs> Which he was. Oh yeah, he was crazy. But he would oh, cite you for contempt God. every time he even suggested that he was doing something 24 wrong. 24 times for poor Mark Rylance. Yeah. Who, I mean, even by the end, Joseph Gordon-Levitt was like objecting because it was so ridiculous. Well, it is ridiculous, uh, and it's it's very scary. Some of the stuff that happened. Uh, no Bobby kidding. Seal ends up bound and gagged in the courtroom, handcuffed to his chair. He can't get up. How is that happening uh, in a U.S. courtroom? Bound and gagged in front of a jury. Yeah. Uh, beaten, and everybody sits very quietly in the courtroom, knowing he is being beaten, waiting while he's being beaten. And then he limps back in, bound and gagged. Oh my gosh, I can't even. Yeah. First of all, all of the seven white men are out on bail. They walk into the courtroom at their leisure wearing their nice suits and haircuts. One person is in jail and has to come in in like an orange jumpsuit, jumpsuit and shackles. Guess which, which one, one it is. So ridiculous. There's a I lot here. Oh, and so there's a much. lot of parallels that Aaron Sorkin does a really good <laughs> job of drawing. Mm -hmm. This is not just a 1968 era movie. Mm -hmm. This is could be happening today. Uh-huh. <laughs> That's what is the big takeaway here. It's a very timely movie. Mm -hmm. So this is what happens if you let politics get into the courtroom. Mm -hmm. Because I mean, it's crazy was. to me that that somehow is the American way. 
I mean, you know, yeah. I, I can't believe all the things they elect <laughs> that really should not... Yeah, absolutely. I mean... Judges and law enforcement. You don't enforcement have to be and, qualified. No. You just have to... And make promises that you can't keep. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and those promises shouldn't be yours to make. Uh, the law is the law. <laughs> it's, I don't know. This is so crazy <laughs> to me. This the law is, is so... what you interpret it to be. Um, uh, yeah. Anyways. Aaron Sorkin uh, really, I think, plays it pretty conservative with his directing. It's a pretty straightforward film. It's not flashy. It doesn't need to be. No. What it does really well is sifting through months and months and months, because this trial dragged on forever. It did. And yet he is able to flip through. I don't even want to think about that poor court reporter. Just yeah. <laughs> So he went through so many pages of this for months and months and months to get those few scenes that this movie really boils down to that'll really get our goat. And they do. They do. They do. There's probably more <laughs> that he left on the cutting room floor. For sure there are. But this works. It's two hours mm -hmm. and it seems to give you the whole picture. It feels mm -hmm. like it does. Yeah. And that's important. Mm-hmm. So I guess you liked it. I really liked it. Good. And one other person that I have to mention okay. is Michael Keaton. Yes. Who is in here as the uh, former attorney general, mm -hmm. who will not be in for a long time, but played a really great <laughs> part in the court. Yes. Yeah. I I knew the lawyer in you was really admiring that. <laughs> yeah. Imagine being able to have that moment. It's unbelievable. It's insane that it happened. Yeah. <laughs> it's so insane uh yeah i mean that it happened and then it wasn't allowed to happen like this whole like oh yeah if you made this if you invented this story people would say this movie isn't believable and yet ripped from the historical yeah. pages of 1968 yeah the only surprising thing is that they waited this long that's true to I mean, it is a circus. This courtroom is a circus the way I've never seen it before. Never. And it's real life. Well, it shouldn't have happened. Oh, no kidding. None of this should ever happen. <laughs> but it I all mean, did. you can go back so many levels to say how far back it shouldn't have happened. And yeah. there are many, many levels. Yeah. So, yeah, it is a mind-boggling movie certainly very engrossing and very interesting and inflammatory yeah solid performances all around although because the cast is so extensive you don't feel like you get enough time with any of them that's uh, true but it's a good ensemble uh michael keaton does have a great little <laughs> role but i do think that frank langella is the hero of this i think what a crazy yeah. role and he does it to perfection really you want to punch him, you believe it, and then you can't believe it. So what more do you want? Yeah, it's the height of courtroom drama. <laughs> it sure is, yes. So do you think we'll be seeing any of these names come Oscar time? I do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I do. I think the only question is who gets the recognition <laughs> because it is such a deep cast. Mm -hmm. And it is a Frank Langella is a standout, but again, he's a supporting character. Like yeah, I mean, I think really... in a movie like this, everyone is yeah. supporting. There's you can't really say that, and nobody has a huge amount of screen time here. So I think that's the only obstacle mm -hmm. is where uh, you have to decide who you're going to nominate yes. out of this well, very it's deep cast. Well, it's better to not have them all competing against yeah. each other, or else. This will be a very tricky category yeah. this year in your pool. Aaron Sorkin oh. for a screenplay. Yes, you see that? Oh, absolutely. That's I think first. that's a given. I oh, think. a given. Yeah. Oh, wow. I know. Sean gave it, guys. I gave it. So, you better take it. <laughs> well, take it. Why not? <laughs> it's still shiny. Okay. <laughs> so, it's on Netflix. Mm -hmm. uh, and we're a little late in reviewing it because we tried. And, and it was too it fresh. Was too much. I was still too <laughs> yeah, far. Like, so couldn't do furious. it. Yes. 
Just couldn't get it out, guys. <laughs> so here it is. <laughs> here it is. And yes, you can find it on Netflix and <laughs> Let I us know if you it. watched it, guys. Yeah. I thought it was great. So everyone, thanks for watching. Bye. Bye.